The awesome store is a van that sells mysterious and really strange items. They offer a wide variety of objects, ranging from a pair of ordinary glasses to even living beings. That's a bit shady, but at least it's not a white van. So we shouldn't worry. One of the sold products was this universal remote that Rob uses to fight Gumball with very powerful features. So that makes me wonder, what is the most powerful object in Gumball? We will go from the weakest to the strongest, explaining their powers and the things they have in particular. This magic wand can be seen in the episode called The Fairly Old Parents, or that's how it should have been titled, since the voice act as magical godparents for Richard and decide to fulfill his wishes as much as possible, since he tells them the tragic incident when he was a child. This is a plastic wand that comes out as a toy in a cereal box. When they find it, Gumball and Darwin try to make a wish, and it didn't work. Dude, catch a spell! Willy Wigger, kill that n We put this at the bottom, since it's like the later seasons of Fairly Old Parents, really f useless. When Gumball's clothes have shrunk because it was Richard's responsibility to do the laundry, he has no other option left, so he's forced to wear Nicole's wedding dress to school. When Gumball's class see him outside, they don't recognize him, and they completely change the way they treat him. As NA says, everyone would do anything for a beautiful girl, and that's a thing. You might know this as the pretty privilege. It's a term that explains how attractive people are playing life on easy mode. So we could say that the power of the dress is to make the wearer more attractive to others, as we can clearly see with Gumball throughout the episode, using the dress for his own advantage. And even at the end, where Darwin, being a complete goofball, falls in love completely with a hydrant since the dress falls on it. That's literally a power, since we attribute positive qualities to people who are attractive. It's called the halo effect. And why do I know all these things? Um, <clears throat> well, <laughs> yeah, maybe I need to go outside and get some beef. Grady, Frank and Howdy are these three puppets that the boys find when they're taking out old toys. For the kids who don't know what toys are, it's like an object that children used to play with back in the day before YouTube and TikTok. These seems like ordinary puppets, but as the episode progresses, we realize that it's not the case, since the puppets have a certain degree of consciousness. Sorry, but you did make me promise. And they also take control of the person who is using them. As we see, they take Darwin's total consciousness, taking complete control over him. Although, as Gray says, if someone does not control them, they can still be able to see and hear what's going on. Remind me to apologize to Anais's dolls. They're right next to my underpants drawer. The last characteristic of this is that they can take the world to their world of puppets, and they definitely leave Darwin with a trauma. That's for sure. If they are not hired on this list, it's because they have a lot of power over the one using them, but are not useful if nobody's using them or they just take him off. The Male Power 2000 is a supplement seen in the episode titled The Mossatch. Gumball, Darwin, and Nana is eat the entire box of supplements, a cereal, by mistake since Richard left with the real cereal when he was feeling vulnerable for his lack of masculinity or something like that. This supplement gives a mustache, a height, and an absolute unit body to a person who consumes it. Basically, a giga chat. Also, eating this will provide you with super strength and a tasty six pack. This is they get a little taste of what's like being an adult, and as barely the adult I am, I can confirm that it is indeed pretty depressing, and I'm very scared of a landlord. Oh no, it's a landlord! So the power that this thing has is to give the person beat muscles and rise their testosterone to the roof. <laughs> That's why it's above the previous ones, since it's really good to increase your power, and also because if you could inject this supplement into your veins, it would easily be a bestseller among gym bros. Richard's refrigerator was sold by the awesome store, so we know this one is not gonna miss. It's a fridge that you shouldn't keep food in it, because it stores memories and emotions. Powerful enough to cause a blizzard that traps Richard in a prison of ice and it tells you. And since you cannot store food in it, you will avoid eating saturated fats, which would result in you living a healthier lifestyle and living longer. But other than that, I don't really see any other benefit. We see this object in the episode The Console. The game child is a console Richard bought from the awesome store. But like many children all over the world, Gumball is deceived with a knockoff console. <laughs> like the police station or the X-Boy. 
The power of this artifact is to turn the whole world into a Final Fantasy type beat. This episode might hit home for some of you if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, but I never played it since I never had a console, except if we count the police station. I, I was more of Flash games and The Sims, so that's why I'm very masculine. But as I was saying, the console has the power to transform the world into a video game. You've earned the no life trophy. Through my head. I've been controlling some characters' way to act, as we see with Mr. Robinson and many more. But the thing is that I don't know if this is something you could use for your advantage. Here's some healing ointment to help my butt in the heat of battle. <laughs> but either way, I consider it to be a pretty powerful object. In the episode The Game, they're cleaning under the bed because apparently Nicole finds it disgusting. What is this? Oh, that's a glass of milk. <laughs> Life is good though. They find the board game they made called Dodge of Dare. They try to avoid it, but the calls are too intense and they end up playing it. And once you start again, it must be finished because the plot needs to move, I guess. So as I say, it's a board game where the objective is to dance through all the squares until reaching the end. By taking deers in the process, the thing is the cards have real consequences. Applying the effects of each card to the person. <laughs> and it lasts until the game is finished. Although in the episode it is made clear that the effects on people are proud of their imagination, but for them are quite realistic. So it's safe to say that it could dry insane someone. That's why it is considered. The Forbidden Book can be seen in the episode The Mirror, and it's about Gumball receiving an email that says if he doesn't forward this message to 10 people, he will be cursed. I don't have any contacts left since everyone blocked me, but hey, at least I'm not cursed. However, the silly bozo decides to ignore it and the whole family is cursed. Good thing is that Carrie helps them using this book to save them. We didn't see much of it, but the little we saw makes it clear that it's quite a powerful object. It seems to be made of leather with an unattractive face smiling on the cover, similar to the Necronomicon from the Evil Dead. It appears to have several spells, incantations and rituals. They use it to fight the ghost that is attacking them, who turns out to be Carrie's dad. Honestly, I couldn't ever guess the emo girl had daddy issues. Truly shocking. Some of the spells we saw were the power to travel in time, also to become young, to resurrect someone and more on others. But it has a very big disadvantage. Each of these has a side effect as we clearly saw in the episode. A really powerful object, but pray that they don't catch you in the hood with a book. That'll be embarrassing. <laughs> In the episode The Helmet, we see this tinfoil hat that provides the wearer with extreme luck. It's not clear how Gumball got this fancy work of art. We could deduce he crafted it. And we are shown at the beginning of the episode what he can do. Richard winning a boat that definitely would make his neighbors feel envious. Also, Nicole gets an interview for a promotion and makes everyone fight. So Anna is in Darwin decided to take it to the garbage stone, but a wild Gumball tries to avoid this and demonstrates once again the luck that it gives to the possessor. Come on, nice. There's no way you can miss from there. <laughs> the luck factor seems to be very powerful, but it won't make you invincible since they deflect a tennis ball into the helmet. This very powerful object can be seen in the last episode of the fourth season, The Disaster, and in the first one of the fifth season, The Rerun. This is bought by Rob in the awesome store. Oh, you know TVs, DVD players, go brainless, yeah? Go wacky! Well, it's actually stolen. This thing is so strong that it's better than any GTA shit code that you can use. It can freeze, advance or rewind time, put to titles, lower the brightness of the world, teleport an object, eject someone, among many other things. Only for $12.99. Ruff is the remote and its powers while fighting Gumball, and we see how this scene has the complete control over the world, and how the theory that in a TV show makes more sense. Press the channel there was button. disturbance in the parking lot at... It's like I'm inside a giant... <gasps> but talking of that, let's move on to our last object. The most powerful object can be seen in the episode The Shippany, as well as many other weird objects from the awesome store. Since it starts with Donut Cop investigating the shopkeeper of the awesome store, we see more diabolical objects. Oh, apparently, the store has like four floors and a pair of normal glasses. Ah, my wife, she looks like a moose. What kind of dark magic is this? Uh, they're not magic. He drives off, and the police have to chase him, dropping the magic notebook. To which Sarah, who I find similar to those edgy, annoying 14 year olds. Wait, wait! I'm an otaku. The light could kill me. <laughs> she picks the notebook and starts writing fan fictions of everyone in Elmore. And she even shipped Gumball and Darwin. 
That's good, since this was what we all really crave. I mean, that's a shout out to the episode The Dress we saw earlier. The notebook has a black cover with the Cartoon Network logo in gold on the front. It has the power to alter reality at the whim of the person who writes in it. As we see Sarah doing by creating new characters or making people do what she writes. Crazy! That's even more powerful than the Death Note. So with this notebook you can alter the entire reality without any complications. And the fact that it has the Cartoon Negro logo makes it a really overpowered object. Since we don't know if it can affect the realities of other Cartoon Negro shows. And that's just insane. And again this lines a lot with what I was talking about in the remote. And what I go in depth in this video. So go watch this one to see what the remote and the notebook really imply. Thanks for watching and don't forget to drop a like and subscribe.